Now, how does hydrogen bonding uh, between different peptide bonds uh, stabilize these secondary structures? So let's look at this in the context first of an alpha helix. So here's the ribbon, the purple ribbon is shown, which shows the right-handed uh, orientation of the twist of the alpha helix, okay? And then the orientation for this is here's the N-terminal side, and here's the C-term side, all right? And so if we do our sort of right-hand rule, right, thumb goes this way, and then we curl our fingers, and the curl fingers follow the rotation of the alpha helix, okay? And so if you look in here, these dashed lines indicate hydrogen bonding. And so there's a hydrogen bond between uh, where the donor is the NH of a peptide bond and the uh, H bond acceptor is the carboxyl group of a different peptide bond. All right? So if we count the number of peptide bonds, what we can find out is what's the minimum, minimum number of peptide bonds we need in order to form uh, one rotation in the alpha helix. All right? So the peptide bond is going to have one of these blue atoms, which is the nitrogen, and then uh, one of these red atoms are the oxygen. So here's a, uh, for instance, here's one peptide bond. So one there. Okay, we can find another one back here. Two. All right, and then there's another one right here. It's hard to see the red atom because uh, it's miscolored. Uh, three, and then finally, here's where the H bond donor is. So this is the peptide bond where there's the H bond donor uh, that interacts with the uh, carboxyl group of this peptide. So we have one, two, three, four uh, peptide bonds are the minimum number that are required in order to do this. All right, so what we actually get here is it's 3.4, if we count the number of amino acid residues instead uh, to form one peptide bond, it averages out over the length of the entire, um, of the entire helix is 3.4 uh, residues per turn. All right, so each turn of an alpha helix is 3.4 residues. Okay, so that's the hydrogen bonding uh, within there. So other things that are important about this, uh, about this alpha helical structure is that the, the way uh, the alpha helix wraps, there isn't any space in the middle of the, um, in the middle of the cone. If you look down uh, into the cone of an alpha helix, there is no free space, okay? So the atoms are pushed up against each other. All right, so that's called packing, right? So they're taking up as much space, they're, they're taking all the space as possible and interacting with each other, okay? And so that allows it to be very, this is this a very compact form, and then it forms this uh, nice secondary structure.